Hey guys, it's Shorin, and today I'm super excited to be showing you the very, very much requested, I repeat, a lot of you guys have requested this one, how to make deep, groovy, minimal house like Dimish. As usual, you can get the full project file, samples, all of that stuff from this video right in the top of the description. It really supports me if you go check that out and get it. And yeah, let's get started. So here's the bass line. This is the first sound. And so here's the mini. So right off the bat, you'll notice it's a really simple bass line. It's really just four notes. It's just G, A sharp, D, and then C. And then you can see we have a few different octaves of every note. We have lots of swing too. Like if I put this on the 16th note grid, you can see how all these 16th notes are a little bit off the grid. That's what's giving it that groove. So that's pretty important. And yeah, so pretty much like you know, the way you want to write a bass line like this, it's not too crazy. The main thing here is the call and response. So we're getting... It's like, da -na -na, da -na -na -na. so yeah, that's like, you know, doing something like that can really do a lot for your bass line. And it's not hard to do because it's basically all just in the same scale. You know, like I'll say we're in G minor here because we have G, A sharp and D. So it's like, we're really just playing with different things in the G minor scale. You know, you just have to kind of choose your scale and then just start writing like a simple bass line in that, in that scale. Now, for the sound on this one, it's made with operators. So what this is, is it's actually not doing any FM. You can see, we just have every, si every wave playing side by side here. And then what's happening is we just have a saw wave and a sine wave to give it a little bit more depth. The sine wave just kind of like fattens it up a little bit more. And then those are going into a low pass filter. And then you can see the low pass just has this very gentle envelope here. You know, it just makes it like... That nice driving kind of plucky bass. You can see I've got a bit of the soft shaper as well, just beefing it up. And yeah, then I just put a bit of drum bus on there to make it a bit fatter and a bit more full. Then we have an EQ cutting out a bit of room for the kick at 100 hertz and then boosting the lows. And then finally, it's just being side chained to the kick a little bit. And one thing I'll say, I noticed the side chain is pretty important, even though this bass line isn't really playing at the same time as the bass as the kick like it's not just doom, 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 like the kick is you still need a bit of side chain to make that kick really come through the way you want it to. at least on the bass line then we have the kick and yeah so you can hear this one's pretty simple you really just want like this big fat 909 kick like this i've got this one which has just been layered together with a few samples to really get the fullness and then you can see we just have a bit of saturation on that just making it a bit stronger and yeah and then i have the kick and bass in a group together just with a bit of saturation here's without that and then with it so you can hear what that does it just fills in the harmonic space between them and makes the low end all together feel a lot smoother and more full and then we have this chord stab So the way this is made is actually by taking this one stab sample, I'll play it for you. It's that, just like this really short little sort of like, that was probably like a Rhodes sample or something like that. And then what's happening here is we have it inside of the sample, here's the MIDI, it's really simple. It's just like, boom, burr, burr, like this note. And then a note, five notes up. Real simple. But then what's happening is I have it going through a bandpass filter. So if you look at this, you can see we have this bandpass here. It's set like that. And then I have an envelope on that. So we're using this almost like a synth where you would sit there and, you know, play with the envelope to get it to be the shape that you want. We're doing that with the filter on top of the sample. So that's how you take this. And then you get this. And yeah, something you'll notice also is we do have a little bit of LFO on the filter, so it's kind of moving it around. So we have multiple things moving it. But yeah, this is a great way to create these sort of deep chords like you hear in a lot of Dimash tracks and a lot of tracks in the style. You know, it's just burnt, burnt, super simple, super short and bouncy, and it works really well in the track. 
And then we just have that going through some chorus to spread it out a bit. And then some echo and reverb, which are giving it some space. You can see it's actually a really fast reverb. Because you really don't want too much, like, long cavernous stuff. It's just kind of like a quick, like, short type of thing. And then we just have some drum bus to beef it up. And make it as full and big as possible. And that's it for the chord stab. Then we have this FM chord. So here are the notes for this one. So again, we're in the key of G minor. So if you look at this, you can see these are just playing G minor chords. It's the same chord actually each time. It's just that second time is an octave up. But what's happening here is so you can see we have our G minor chord. Those three notes. And then we have a minor seventh and a ninth on top. And so we're making G minor nine chords. So these are really good for the style. These are really like what are going to give you that more jazzy sort of deep house sound is not just using like a basic minor chord, but using a minor seventh or minor ninth chord. So yeah, again, it just starts with the basic minor chord and then we're adding the extra voices on top of it. And then you can hear just by jumping between the different octaves, you get a more interesting kind of se second chord because this way it doesn't have to just be the same thing every single time. You kind of get some variation. So with this one, it's really simple. It mostly just comes down to the synth patch. You can see we have three sine waves here inside of operator just FMing each other. Really straightforward. The second one's an octave down. The third one is two, is two, I guess, an octave up from the original. You can see it's also detuned a little bit. And then what's happening is we have the attack turn up on the first one. So that's how we're getting that like, like it's kind of going into the chord. And you can hear that sounds really cool in this track because we're getting kind of like the variation between these different types of chord stabs. You know, we have one that's very, and then one that's kind of like sliding into the note. And so that's the thing. This one, it's not just about the sound that you're hearing right at, you know, just this. It's also how it's just fitting in with like the other chord stab being very bouncy and this one being very and just kind of like getting that different dynamic between them. And then this one's just going through a bit of chorus. You can see, yeah, that's really all we have on there for effects. And that's it for that FM chord. And then the last chord we have down here is this background chord, which sounds like this. So this one actually is just playing a G minor chord. Yeah, usually with these background chords, this is something I've heard in a lot of demo tracks and a lot in, in this style of tracks in general, this is used, you know, just to have like this kind of deep chord playing underneath everything. It works really well for like just setting the mood and kind of like setting up the atmosphere of the track. You know, if I turn this off, it's a very different type of track. Then when we turn that on, so that's what that's doing in terms of music for the track. Now for the sound, it's a really simple one. You can see it's just two saw waves and also a bit of noise. And then those are just going into a low pass. And then the low pass is set like that. We've got a bit of resonance. You get that juicy like when it's opening up. And then we have an LFO on there. So that's kind of just moving it. And yeah, that's important. Like if you're going to make a chord like this, you know, again, it's very deep. It's very chill in the background. But you still want it to have some movement or else it's just going to be too flat and too dull for the track. So you can see, yeah, I've just got this low pass, the LFO on there. Kind of gives it some waves and brings it to life. And then we get the amp envelope like that. And then we just have a bit of chorus and a bit of reverb, you know, giving it some space. We have a bit of drum bus because even though this is a background sound, we still want it to be as full and as big as possible. And then finally, we just have a high pass filter. And then I have this auto pan, and this is really just meant to simulate like this being side chained to the kick. You know, you can hear it's like kind of bouncing. And yeah, I could have just side chained this to the kick, but this also makes it so that when you're in the break, like let's say your break is like this. You're still getting that like kind of pulse happening with it oh yeah that's it for the background chord then we have the percussion which i laid these out in a way i actually haven't done this before but i laid these out in a way where you can see like 
kind of each individual hit on here. So this is all happening in MIDI. You can see we just have a bunch of different effect and or little percussion samples here. And then they're all just laid out here where the MIDI is like... You can hear everything that goes into it. So yeah, the main thing about the percussion is just getting all the extra layers and like just making sure you have enough stuff for this style because it needs to be pretty busy, you know? The percussion is really the lead in this style. And if you don't have enough percussion sounds and it's not enough like interesting stuff happening, it's going to feel too kind of flat and it's not really going to work in the track. It's just going to feel like, yeah, I'm professional. You know, it's not really going to be on the same level as these tracks that you hear. So if you can see, we have one, two, we have five different percussions happening here, plus the snare. So the first thing is just this little zap. So this is just made with operator. It's just a sine wave with a really short envelope. And then I just put on this pitch envelope. And so here's without the pitch envelope. And then with it, you can hear it's just like a little pew. But yeah, it's a really simple way to make the zap. You know, these are used a ton in the style of music. Like, it's not just Dimish that uses these. And this is how you make one. And yeah, then we just have, like, mostly samples. Like, we have this one. We have this one. You can hear, we can make this sound like it's two samples by just playing it at two different pitches. We have these little reverse ones as well. So if I play the original of those, it's just like these two little percussion sounds that I had. I think one's a hi-hat. Yeah, it's those two. And then I just reverse those. And that gives you kind of like a cool vibe. A little... And the last one is just this little snare. You can hear the velocity on some of those is a little bit quieter as well. And yeah, this is just your standard sort of like deep house rim shot. And then we have our main snare as well. Which something you'll notice is that this isn't just like, you know, like a standard like, like clap, like kind of sound like you would have in a lot of house. It's a very quick, hard hitting snare. And this makes a lot of difference. This to me is kind of like the snare version of like the shorter hi-hats like you hear, you know, just a little <laughs> It makes the groove feel very like tight and techy by just having a quick little snare like this. Then on the groove of percussion, we just have a bit of drum bus. So here's about that. And then with it, so it just gives everything a little extra push of fatness. And that's it for the percussion. Then we have the hi-hats. So basically we just have our main hi-hat, which is two layers. We have like a hi-hat, which you can see has shortened with the amplitude envelope. And then a shaker to add some mid-range to it. And then we just have this one, just a little tiny. You almost don't notice it, but it's just giving it, like, a bit more movement and a bit more intensity in the groove. This is pretty important, though. Like, even though it's super background, if I get rid of it, there's a lot less energy in the groove. So it's important to add something like that, even if it is in the background. And then we just have this open hi-hat. And that just hits there. And then, yeah, in the groove of hi-hats... Just a bit of saturation and a bit of EQ. This is why I like putting these in a different group from the percussion because with the hi-hats, you really just want like some saturation that's going to make them fatter and just kind of like bring them out. But with the percussion, you really want like that heavy like drum bus like fattening. So by splitting these into two different groups, you can really bring out the fullness of everything. And then the last thing down here is this little metal percussion, which is actually what this is doing is you can see I have the input set to that group, the 14 hi-hats. So what's happening is it's just taking the input of the hi-hats. If I turn all this stuff off, you can hear. That's all it's doing. And if you play it on its own, you can't hear it because that's how the routing works. But what's happening here is we have this going, we have some effects on here. You can see, basically, we're using this track. create this cool sort of metallic ringing. What's happening is 
we have this resonator here, you can see it's on here, and yeah, it's just creating this metallic thing. I actually haven't tuned to G sharp, because it sounded a little bit cooler with the track, just to kind of bring it out a bit more. And then you can see what's happening here is we're just automating the decay of the resonator, so it's making that like kind of a bit bigger at times. And then we're also automating this utility here, the gain. So we're just, you can see just bringing this in and out. And this is something I heard in a few Dimish tracks, and a lot of tracks in the style do this. And what it creates is this cool kind of atmosphere with your percussion because it's not just like, you know, it's not just like an extra percussion layer, like if we just added another sample, but it's percussion, it's an extra layer that's being generated off of the stuff you already have in there. So you're creating, you know, just more atmosphere with less elements, essentially. <laughs> You know, we're filling out the mix more with just the elements we already have rather than adding something new. And it creates just this very fluid and lively feeling with your percussion. So yeah, you know, it's a great way to do it. I really recommend trying, like, you just open up an extra track like this and then you set the input to, like, your hi-hats. Or you could do the percussion as well would probably sound cool. Like, we change it to the whole percussion group. do it with like your chord stabs or anything but it's just a really great way to add some cool lively percussion to your mix without adding another layer and yeah so that is gonna be it for this one guys i hope you enjoyed as always make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think of this video in the comments like i said in the beginning you can get this full project file samples midi presets everything like that from this video it's available right at the top of the description, and if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there. And yeah, thank you so much everybody who has grabbed the sample pack, and who is going to grab the sample pack now. You know, it really helps me out. It's only $5, but with these sample packs and different things like this, I'm able to keep bringing you guys all these awesome tips and really cool videos every day, and showing everyone new stuff, and helping the community. So yeah, thank you so much for the support, everyone, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.